Hello everyone, today I will be working on the mini hammer of justice illustration. It coincides with my woodworking project of the same name. You can see a link to that video in the description down below. This should be a simple, fun illustration that will give you a little insight into my digital work method. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is bring up my file. Alright, here we go. So what I have here is a reference image that I shot of myself holding my mini hammer and afterward I did a quick sketch based off of that reference. Made myself look a little bit different. I look a little bit more Asian because my main character is going to be Asian Hispanic. And I gave myself some body armor and a big fluffy goatee. And I darkened out the background. Most likely this image is going to be pretty dark and it's going to focus mainly on the hammer head. It's going to be zoomed in and there's going to be a blue light illuminating the image that's going to highlight um, the hammer head and part of the face here. So let's set this up. Next I'm going to select my smooth ink pen. zoom in and I'm going to reduce the opacity of this layer so be pretty transparent whoop wrong way sketch that twenty five percent is good now what I'm going to do is start with the hammer head what I like to do for straight edges is usually to use the pen tool. I find that it makes things much more simpler and get a nice cleaner look. And the great thing about the pen tool is whatever brush you have selected over here, it will mimic those lines and that consistency of the brush within the pen tool. And for the inside here, I'm going to use freehand to uh, put in this line work. Now what I'm going to do for the bell uh, attachment from the top here, I'm going to create another layer on top of it so that I can have free play to move the object after I've drawn it and then I will erase the lines that are behind the bell here.
now that my drawing is inked, it is time to go lay down the color flats. This is the stage that makes the digital image divided by sections so that individual parts of the image can be colored independent of one another. In this illustration, I'm using a Photoshop flatting extension that I purchased some time ago, combined with some custom flatting actions that I uh, found also online. So my flat layer is pretty much the way I like it. I'm going to rename it flats, and this one's going to stay hidden away, so you know, I'm not going to see these colors. But what I will do is copy the layer over. It's going to be my base layer for my colors. And that's where I'll put in the main colors that I'll be using for the final. And there go my early tonal flats. Most likely I'll change some of these colors later on, but it's a good start so that I can uh, begin the coloring process. So what I'm going to do now is lay down a few different color comps, get a general idea of how I want the colors and tone to be for this piece. In between the recording here, I put together a few uh, different color comps that I'm working with. I tried out different uh, glows. Tried it with a red glow, a dark midnight blue glow, and the original I started with was an orange glow. I also played with the uh, tone of his uh, shirt. A greenish, a bluish. What I may end up doing is, uh, I kind of like the bluish tone, but I don't know. I don't want it to be too much blue, overwhelmingly in the piece. So I'm going to stick to my first choice, the red, and probably tone it down a little bit so it won't be as saturated. And I probably still will stick with the orange glow, although the dark blue glow kind of I feel gives it a more nighttime look and depending on what background I choose what I choose to do with it I may end up going back to the dark blue but for now I'm gonna stick with my orange glow as well at this point I'm uh, laying down some hard shadows that go underneath the, the objects like under the armor and under the face under the hammer and these are done with a hard brush and after that I take a Gaussian blur and I blur it down about 1.5 percent and I also lighten the opacity of the darks first thing I like to uh, tackle before I get into the colors more I believe I want to flesh out his goatee and eyebrows and for that I'll make another layer and I will Label that hair, and I will use a special brush I have for that. I'm 
over here, my smooth, hard, round brush. Something I like to do before I really get into the fine and finishing details of the coloring is I like to add some textures for realism to my work. And these textures are usually just some objects that I've taken photos of myself or through uh, reference websites that uh, offer them for free. I'll take them and add them to the image, manipulate them a little bit for the shapes and plug them in. And that's what I'm going to do right now with some of the pieces. I'm going to use some texture on his shirt, the hammerhead, the uh, armor, and probably within the leather here and the handle. Now that all the textures are down, I think I would like to begin some more rendering and um, get these tones really popping. Uh, first thing I think I want to do right now is add some facial scruff to uh, my character and test that out and just uh, work on through solidifying the tones outside of the hammer and then once I finish that I'll get into the, the hammer because it's going to have this glow here which I have a practice uh, test one right here and I'm going to play with that a lot and add blues reflection off of other surfaces but I'm going to work pretending right now that that's not fair.
All right, before I finish the final colors and uh, change some of the background tones, I would like to change up some of the line widths that I have or the darknesses and also darken the edges because with my current uh, inking style, the line art isn't as solidly black and I have to go back in and uh, darken some of the lines. So I'm going to start with lightening the inside first and then darken the outside. Because the main focus of this illustration is the hammer, I'm going to push back the character holding it. I'm going to add a, another layer here of a blue tone, and it's going to put him more into a shadow. Something else I would like to do to the jewel down here would be to add a type of pattern. And I could try and draw something freehand, but I'd rather just uh, use a texture and manipulate it. Right here, what I'm going to do is from this hexagonal pattern, spherize part of it, and uh, impose that on my image. All right, this image is almost done. The last thing I'd like to do is manipulate the gem glow. The one that I currently have seems a little bit overwhelming. So I'm gonna play with that a bit to get it to the right point that I like. And I believe that should do it for the glow. I didn't want it to be anything too overwhelming. This one works just nicely. It doesn't overshadow the symbols that surround it. Now what I'm going to do is expand the figure and the hammer into this space more. And here goes the final result. 
I hope you enjoyed watching me make this video today. Uh, please like and subscribe down below. Make sure you check the little bell so you get every notification for every uh, new video that I post. I hope you also check out the corresponding woodworking video that this illustration is based off of where you get to see me make the hammer that this character is holding and also get some insight in my creative process in that. As always, thank you very much. I'm Jim Vargas, the Woodworking Illustrator.